want to know more about the details for the upcoming 2023 ASEAN Tourism Forum, we already connected with Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, Bapak Sandiaga Uno. Hi, Pak Sandi. Good morning. Good morning, Pak Sandi. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Shana. And morning, thank you. Pa for having me in the See Today morning show. Thank you for joining us. Now, Pa, um, on to my first question with the tagline ASEAN, um, a journey to wonderful destinations. The 2023 ASEAN Tourism Forum aspires to elevate ASEAN countries to world tourism destinations. So what strategic steps has Indonesia drawn up to make this happen? Well, I'm indeed very, very... Uh, optimistic and upbeat uh, with the uh, performance of 2022 that is boosted by increase in terms of uh, arrival of uh, foreign tourists mm -hmm. into Indonesia way ahead of uh, our target. And uh, it's, it was uh, basically helped and assisted by many events, including a very successful G20. So in the ASEAN uh, year of chairmanship, whereby we're now heading the ASEAN Tourism Corporations, mm -hmm. Indonesia, as the chair of ASEAN Tourism Professional Monitoring Committee, is focused on improving the uh, human capital in terms of the ASEAN Mutual Recognitions Arrangements and tourism professional. Mm. So it's gonna be a series of events that would focus on marketing and promotional ASEAN as a single destination and a new logo of tourism of destinations for every dream. Mm. This is uh, also a journey to wonderful destinations. And we believe that these activities will be uh, a boost to local economies, we are forecasting to have about 100 million of dollars worth of economic activities uh, led by this event. And also we believe that the target of 7.4 million, which is like double the target of last year, will be achieved through a lot of events and collaborations among the ASEAN countries. And finally, our target of creating 4.4 million new jobs will be achieved by 2024 because of the performance last year that we added almost 3.5 million new jobs. And that's a, a big, big uh, relief because during the pandemic, we lost so many jobs, mm -hmm. but this, uh, Recovery has been very, very robust and very, very strong. So we need to continue and step up uh, our efforts to make sure the momentum of this po positive uh, impact to the local economy and the livelihood of the people will continue for 2023 and beyond. Indeed. Uh, Pak Sandi, as we head into this very important uh, forum, could you share with us what are some of the tourism partnership agreements between the ASEAN countries that are in place right now? Well, we have uh, the ASEAN Plus 3 Tourism Training and Education Forum. There will be a third international conference on uh, uh, MRATP, which is uh, focusing on tourism professional. There, was, there will be also an agreement on ASEAN Plus 3 uh, tourism uh, toolboxes. And uh, I think the uh, initiative with uh, Japan, Korea, and China. In addition, we will have the attendance of India and Russia, which will uh, be uh, basically uh, going to really enrich the event and if you look at Jakarta with its new airport and its brand new uh, world-class mm. airport with a uh, runway that could actually uh, land A380 straight from Doha or from uh, um, Dubai, this will be uh, something that 
uh, it's going to be amazing mm. in terms of attracting new tourism destinations. We're also going to focus on the agreement on sustainable and inclusive uh, tourism development because we don't want this uh, tourism to add into our problems or, of climate change and um, uh, carbon uh, emissions. Mm. But we want to make sure that the ASEAN Tourism Chair Statement will endorse several documents for sustainability, for uh, human capital development, uh, also for health, because we just went through a very a tragic uh, incident or tragic uh, pandemic. Mm. And we believe that uh, also there's a traffic agenda, which is travel expositions, uh, will increase potential bookings and revenue for ASEAN tourism industry with the concept of ASEAN as a, as a single destination. Okay. Okay, now, uh, Pasandi, we also know that um, there are so many countries that are involved in uh, the ASEAN Tourism um, Forum. Now, we also want to know um, what cooperation and consensus are expected to be reached in the forum. The uh, consensus uh, will reach on few uh, of the, I would say, the continuations of the Bali guidelines mm. of the G20 that we have uh, worked so hard last year. So the consensus basically uh, would focus on this MICE uh, toolboxes because we lead uh, the development of this MICE toolboxes with Thailand. We are also boosting the certifications of cleanliness, health, safety and environmental sustainability that we have really worked very hard during the pandemic. Also, uh, another consensus that uh, the tourism will be inclusive to include women and uh, the young generations uh, and also micro and small medium enterprises. Another consensus that we are going to focus is the quality of the tourism that is actually going to be well defined by the length of stay and the quality of spending into the local economy. So at the end, it would be the jobs and the prosperity of the local economies that we believe that uh, tourism will bring in. Another consensus, and this is going to be lobbied very hard across the 10 members ASEAN, is our net zero commitment, uh, whereby by 2035, our consensus is to reduce by 50% our carbon emissions. Right now, the industry emit about 8% of uh, across the uh, sectors within the tourism uh, stakeholders, around 8%. We need to reduce it by 4% and go completely net zero by the year of 2040. So 2045, we will uh, basically could announce to the world that tourism uh, industry is completely net zero and that would be an opportunity for uh, tourism professionals to engage in activities to support uh, the uh, green destinations, mm. uh, smart destinations, blue uh, economy as well as the circular economy. Right. Pa Sandy, I would like to go back to that point you mentioned in regards to spending and the economy. We might as well address the elephant in the room, as many have predicted a rough year ahead with a global recession possibly forecasted to affect up to 70 different countries. In fact, a lot of people fear that there'll be a food and energy crisis this coming year. And it's likely some people, if not a lot of people, will consider tourism as less of a priority or even less of an essential need. So what policies are in place to anticipate this, both on the national and regional level? Five strategic policies. First is we need to focus on domestic economy because our domestic economy will continue to grow around 5%. Uh, and we need to shift our priority towards domestic tourist movement which uh, last year reached about 700 million. And this year, the target was doubled uh, to 1.4 billion uh, of domestic tourist movement. This will create um, uh, 
movement uh, in terms of uh, grassroots economy, uh, tourism village. We are seeing events-led uh, recovery. In terms of boosting our competitiveness, we need to create events at the regional level, at the local level, at the national level, and at the international level. We will also focus on our strategy uh, to empower the micro, small, medium enterprises in terms of the creative economy so that uh, uh, this uh, supply chain that has uh, in the past rely on a lot of imports with the national movement of uh, buy Indonesian products mm -hmm. could actually help the uh, local economy. We believe that uh, our contributions to the economy will increase to 4.1% this year. And in terms of number of jobs, and I keep repeating number of jobs because this is absolutely critical for the sectors to survive during a lot of uncertainties, would be that this sector continue to create good quality jobs across the industry. We also need to improve in terms of upskilling, reskilling, and new skilling uh, and digitalization because uh, everything has, go, has gone digital. So tourism and creative economy will have to embrace on how we could bring digitalizations on a 360 basis. All right, Pasandi, uh, let's shift our focus a little bit in regards to the city itself, yeah. Yogyakarta, which you handpicked personally as the host for this upcoming event. What is it about Yogyakarta that you personally found attractive and the appropriate place to hold such a prestigious event? Well, last year we had Bali as our host for uh, the G20 and for the very first time, World Tourism Day uh, across the world was celebrated in Bali. Uh, I was thinking, um, what would uh, really be uh, a venue that could bring in uh, the quality and the sustainability aspects of the tourism? And because we have the five super priority destinations, Yogyakarta uh, actually uh, felt the uh, going to be the best choice mm. and then we uh, had a survey of people within the industry that beside Bali which would be the next best uh, destinations and it is actually part of the promoting one of our super priority destinations of Borobudur that is actually going to be the uh, uh, main uh, reasons for picking Yogyakarta as as the venue and Borobudur in terms of uh, infrastructure readiness the proximity it had to be Yogyakarta and plus I actually fell in love with Yogyakarta because <laughs> Yogyakarta felt very romantic and <laughs> it has a new airport in Kulon Progo yes. uh, it has nicest hotels and uh, actually 20 years ago, Yogyakarta hosted the uh, ASEAN Tourism Forum, so it will be nostalgic to uh, some of the country members. Mm -hmm. And it has the amenities for meetings, it has the transport facilities, and the governor, uh, Bapak Sultan, has committed uh, that it would also go hand in hand with the central govern government to put uh, resources in terms of preparations for the ASEAN Tourism Forum 2023, including the renovations of uh, the Jogja Expo Center, which will host the traffics in 2023. Mm. Uh, Yogyakarta also offers various interests with the uh, award-winning tourism village and the actually world champion of tourism village within uh, the vicinity of the venue. Uh, and this is in Gunung Kidul called Desa Wisata Nglanggeran. So Yogyakarta has it all. And I would say that the preparation is now almost 97, 98% completed. So we have the Jogja uh, Expo Center renovations. We have the open air theater for Chandi Prambanan for the opening ceremony. And we hope and pray that the president will uh, be able to come and host the opening ceremony. Mm. 
Mm. And then our official and partner hotels, they spruce up uh, their the rooms, uh, the meeting venues, transportation is ready, and Borobudur. This is going to be a very mm -hmm. nice surprise that we are going to trial uh, and pilot project actually this limited um, uh, the limited opening of Borobudur uh, in terms of this uh, conservation uh, strategy of a package, uh, a tour package to go uh, and see the Borobudur up close and you could touch uh, the temple. Uh, and this is uh, going to be the first after the pandemic. Uh, we're going to have a technical tour of Borobudur and actually we're going to test the conservation's uh, effort because uh, once it is uh, going to be open, it will limit only to about 1,000 visitors a day. So this is, will be the uh, kickoff of the uh, actual physical tours of the technical tours of Borobudur. Uh, no ah, place like it in the world, definitely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Yogyakarta is a very beautiful place. Now, um, Pak Sandi, um, as my last question, um, ATF will kick off events leading to the 2023 ASEAN Summit under Indonesia's chairmanship. Now, personally, um, what are your hopes for this forum, uh, Pak Sandi? My hope? And it is everyone's hope mm. that this is going to be the year of uh, recovery. As for the ASEAN uh, logo, this will be the epicentrum of growth, whereby tourism and creative economy create six times more jobs than other sectors for the same dollar of uh, invested capital. There are going to be two main agendas which is the ASEAN Tourism Ministerial Meetings. I hope this will uh, create a consensus how we move forward as ASEAN in terms of Indonesia's chairmanship to create not just competitive nature of the member states, but also the collaborative efforts. Uh, we hope that the travel exchange will open up opportunity for businesses to uh, share knowledge, best practice of the B2B exhibitions, but also increase the quality and the sustainability of the industry. And uh, also there will be South East Asia Business Forum. Uh, hopefully this will create more investments and I hope it will create good uh, focus on uh, ecotourism, the healing, refreshing, as well as how we could create uh, sustainable destinations. And also there will be a fashion show uh, wow. for the uh, uh, sustainable uh, fashion, mm -hmm. uh, which is alongside the agenda. So if we flash back to our presidency G20, we did not hope for a lot of uh, uh, big, uh, sort of like massive breakthrough, but we did. Uh, nobody expect Indonesia were able to push this Bali guidelines and uh, get uh, a very strong communique out, uh, out of the G20. So it will be uh, the same for ATF, ASEAN Tourism Forum. We hope it will bring similar benefits to the stakeholders, to the tourism yeah. industry. I hope the revenue stream of the industry will increase, jobs will be created and it will showcase platform for Indonesia as we are ready to host world-class events, international events like before. We have implemented and will continue to implement safety and health protocols. And I do hope this uh, ASEAN Tourism Forum will bring in the epicentrum of growth for Indonesia as Indonesia as developed country and uh, entering into the golden period of Indonesia in 2045. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank indeed. You. We agree with you as well. The G20 yeah. not only met and exceeded our expectations, and I'm sure the ASEAN uh, Tourism Forum will as well. Pak Sandi, thank you so thank much you, for Pasandi. taking the time out of your busy day to join us this morning. We wish you nothing but the best of luck, and we do share all of your hopes with you as well. Stay Good safe, luck. Pa. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.